What is going on, Leap Nation? We're back in the hizzy on Classic Tabletop RPG Friday, getting back into our Dark Conspiracy series, doing character creation. So today what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at where I put all of those skill points that I talked about at the end of the last video. And then we're gonna look at how to choose your secondary activities, follow that up with how to choose your contacts, and we're going to begin looking at how to calculate your derived value. So we've got a little bit of stuff to get through. And of course, I gave him a name and you guys will see that right at the very beginning. And of course, also question of the vid on the other side. Well, let's not waste no time, y'all. Let's do this and roll them. All right, so let's take a look at what I've done with this character. Now, I've, gave, I've given the character a name. Marcus Camden is his name. Matter of fact, we go down here, we take a look at him. There he be. That's Marcus in the hizzy with that sweet pea coat and that turtleneck just looks dope. Anyway, go back up here. American Negro, age 37, male, and he is currently a private investigator. Now we're going to do the weight and height and the load later on, but let's take a look at these skills here. So this is what I did. We got a four in melee combat, unarmed. He knows a little bit of, because of where he's been into. So he knows some street fighting, but he also took some training as well over the years because he had to be a bounty hunter. So he's got melee combat of four. He has small arms pistol of four. Same deal because of what he's been into in terms of his career. So it's pretty consistent. We go down here to his agility. Got a couple in lockpick, couple in pickpocket. Again, gangs on the street. Couple on stealth. And that would probably both be gangs and bounty hunter. Down here, we've got some observation. We've got stalking. And check this out. My boy knows how to find out what's going on on the streets. He is streetwise like a mug. He knows what is up. Uh, nothing under education because education is my lowest one. But we do have some acting and bluff. We have some disguise so he can disguise himself a little bit. He's got a little bit of experience with interrogation and a little bit under persuasion. And then lastly, we have foreboding already, which is really cool, by the way. So that's what I did in terms of getting all of his skills put in their place after going through five terms of a career, two as a ganger, one as a bounty hunter, and two as a private investigator, which is what he will start the game off as. Careers do not occupy all of a character's time. They have hobbies and pastimes, just like we do in real life. They can provide valuable additional skills for that character. So each character is allowed one secondary activity per term. This allows the character to gain one level in any one skill. And that's going to be the player's choice. And it's going to have to come from this secondary activities list here. So as you can see, I pretty much got all of them here. Since Marcus served five terms, he can have five additional skills. So let me go and put in what I want into my character sheet, and then I'll come back and show you guys what I did. All right, so what I did here, I put one in my strength. So I took my strength from five to six. I put two in melee combat because he's been on the street he's been a bounty hunter this guy knows how to handle himself and on top of that he's taken some martial arts class so he knows a little bit about how to handle himself so i'll put two there now if we go down here i put one in stalking just because again he's been in the urban area and he knows what he's doing when it comes to that and I put one up here in my education. Let's say he just went back to school, got his GED, maybe even got his diploma and walked down the aisle. Just, it was much later, but he didn't care. It was just kind of a personal thing for him. 
So that's what I did with my secondary activities. So now we've got that knocked out and out of the way. Let's go to contacts. Each term, the PC gets a certain number and type of contact. There are three different types. You have your generic, your solid, and your specialist. Generic contacts are those received during character generation. There are 12 different categories of contacts, and these are general categories. If you want to get more specific with a contact as far as details, then that would mean that you are going to change them into a solid contact. Now, technically, there are three different types of solid contacts. Now, solid contacts are those that a PC knows and knows where they are. They know details about them. So the first type of solid contact would be the other PCs who are in the game running with you. The second type would be, say you have a generic contact, like a law enforcement contact. And you're like, wait a minute, I have an idea for contact. His name is George Markson. He is a homicide detective down at the 23rd precinct. And he lives at, you know, 545 Maple Street or something like that. So once you start getting real granular with a contact, you have now changed them from a generic contact to a solid contact. Now, the third type of solid contact is a generic contact except their conversion to a solid contact happens in the midst of gameplay. So during the adventure. So those are your kinds of contacts. Now, once a generic contact is turned into a solid contact that way forever, you can't switch them back. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go through all the careers that Marcus has gone through, which will be a ganger, a bounty hunter and a private investigator. So we have to switch this here first let's do it let's do it in a row too in the order that it was done so we're first we're going to go to our ganger and we're going to look at contacts that a ganger gets and it's right here so it looks like it gets one per term either criminal law enforcement or a specialist which is streetwise on a 1d10 roll then the contact is foreign very highly doubt contact is going to be foreign, but tell you what we're going to choose here. We've got two. One's going to be a criminal. The other one's going to be streetwise because that just makes sense, right? All right. So now we're going to make two rolls and let's see what the first roll is. It's a six. So that contact, whichever one it was, that contact is not going to be foreign. Let's go with the second roll and see what we can get with that. Roll them, roll them, roll them. Okay, it's a four. So neither one of these contacts are foreign. So he's, you can just leave them like this or you can make them into a solid contact later on or something like that. So now let's go ahead and go to the second career that he had, which was a bounty hunter. So this is the bounty hunter right here. And here are the contacts. Looks pretty much exactly the same as the ganger. So what we're gonna do is we're going to roll one time because he only served one term as a bounty hunter, four years. So let's see what he gets. And it's just a three. So that's the end of that. On this one, it's gonna be a law enforcement contact because again, that just makes sense. All right. Well, let's do the last one. And this one is the private investigator and the private investigator. Let's go down to his It's up here. OK, it's right here, right here. And the, he gets two per term. Mm. Either criminal law enforcement or government. So we've expanded it a little bit. Somebody's got some contacts and a roll of 1D10 for a nine plus for the contact to be four in. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to choose one criminal, one law enforcement and two government. So he has two criminal, two law enforcement and two government overall. But now what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to roll for all four of those contacts to see if any of those contacts are going to be foreign. So let's see what we can get here with our first roll. 
four, and the four didn't light up. Hmm, that's not good. Uh, let's go to the second one. An eight, almost. Almost, but not quite. Got a two right there. That's a no. Got one more. Okay, so it looks like Marcus doesn't have any foreign contacts. However, he does have a good array of contacts. He's got the one streetwise. He's got two criminal. He's got two law enforcement. He's got two government. This guy knows folks. Not me. Initiative represents a character's ability to remain cool and act most effectively in combat situation higher is better and it is determined by your career if you had a civilian career it is 1d6 divided by two round it down with zero equaling one and if it was a military career it's a straight 1d6 if you have a mix of military and civilian in terms of your career over the years then you can choose whatever one that you want to apply to your character now some careers give you a bonus as a special but in the case of marcus he doesn't have that and so we're just gonna roll a die see what we get here get it to light up kind of struggling and it's a three so it's one and a half, drop the fraction, and it's a one. And that's not good. But uh, maybe we can raise that later. I don't know. But he's going to have an initiative of one. So let's switch over to the character sheet. All right, we see the initiatives right down here at the bottom. So let's just go ahead and put in one. Not so good. And then that's it. Next on the list are derived values. There are five of those. The first is hit capacity, which is a measure of the amount of damage or hit points a character can take before suffering serious injury. It's broken down depending on what part of the body has been hit. Now, they list in the book seven different areas. So they li list the left and the right leg, the left and the right arm, the abdomen, the chest, and the head. However, on the character sheet, as you can see here, it only lists six of those. So what you could do is just include the abdomen into the chest area, just call it torso, go from there. Each of these body parts have a different hit point value. The head has a hit capacity of the constitution times two. So if we go up here to my constitution, that is a nine. So the head has a hit capacity, and you're going to put this in the current box, of 18 for market. Next is the chest area, the torso area. Now this is strength plus constitution times three. So my constitution is nine. My strength is six. So that means that 15 times three, which is 45. I'm going to put 45 in here. Now, all of the rest of the other body parts have a hit capacity of strength plus constitution times two. So it's the same thing as it was with chest, except it's less. So it's 30 for him and all of the rest of the body parts. And so I'm just going to put that in there like this. And that is it. And there you have all your hit capacity for your whole body for your character. A male character's weight in kilograms, and I don't know why they did this in kilograms back in the day since we're in America. I guess it was wishful thinking. In kilograms for a male, it's going to be 80, which is the base. However, it's gonna be plus four times the strength minus the agility. So this is the actual formula for it. So the first thing we're gonna to need to do, we're gonna to need to take our strength and we're gonna to need to subtract our agility, which is seven. So that's gonna leave us with a minus one. 
and you're going to multiply that times four, which will be a minus four, and then you're going to add that to the base of 80, which is going to be 76. 76 kilograms is 172 pounds. So Marcus is smaller to average guy, right? So I'm going to give him a height of 5'9". And again, his weight is 172 pounds. I'll put a one there instead of a... <laughs> So that is how you figure out your weight. The height is something that you can just figure out off the top of the mind. Just as a friendly reminder, when I'm doing these deep dives, cause we go deep. When I'm doing these deep dives, I do it pure. And what I mean by pure is that no additives, no preservatives in terms of how homebrew rules and all the rest of that. I don't add all of that stuff. We're just going straight from the books from what the creators originally intended and then if you're you know as you're doing this if you're going through this and you're like ah, i want to add this and out be my guest go ahead and do it but that's how we do it here on rpg elite hey y'all if you got any value out of this video at all entertained whatever could you do a brother salad give me a little bit of youtube algorithm love and just uh crush the like button also, if you want to stick around, folks, then I come out with videos every Tuesday and Friday, God willing, and you can join the Leap Nation, at least at least a little bit of it, because there's a deeper part of it that you can join as well, but I'm not going to talk about that in this video. Uh, it's already come across the screen at least once, but if you just want to hang around here on YouTube and be a part of the Leap Nation here, you are more than free by hitting that subscribe button and the notification bell. Question of the vid today, folks. This one I thought about actually while I was getting ready to get up this morning. What movie has scared you or still scares you today? I mean, we're talking about dark conspiracy and we're talking about weird, scary stuff. So when it comes to movies, which one has caught you? Let me know. Let's get some engagement going, y'all. Down in the comments below. That's going to do it for me, man. That means, ya boy, I got to do my shenanigans. So exit, stage left. Hey, you got a game this weekend, then happy gaming, y'all. I pray it is an RPG Elite session. So until next time, God willing, it's me, Servant. Hey, peace. 5,000 elites. Ya boy is outie.